Morning guys, so apologies in my last video, I left the window wide open because I was so hot but the cicadas were so loud and I can hear them now, I don't know if you guys can, but I've shut all the windows in the hopes that that noise isn't going to come through on camera, but anyway it's just, there are insects everywhere at the moment, snakes everywhere and it is just a crazy summer, I've never seen this many snakes or spiders or the sound of cicadas in my life. Either that or I'm just really taking notice of it. Anyway guys, in today's video I wanted to talk all things vintage designer bags or just pre-loved bags for that matter because I can feel myself getting really excited to purchase another bag and add some more bags to my collection. So over the Christmas break, um, I don't know, I think because I'm busy with just visiting friends and buying gifts for other people, my whole um, fashion and buying bags and everything kind of goes out the window and I'm not really thinking about it so that's why there hasn't been that much kind of handbag content lately but now that we're in the new year and everything's kind of settling down I can feel myself slipping back into my hobbies and that is browsing eBay buying old bags and kind of giving them a bit of love. So a little bit of an update on my handbag collection and where it's at. So I think in the last year and a half, I bought and sold like over 30 bags. So I have had a lot of fun with that. And through doing that, I learned a lot about bags. I learned about which ones I liked and which ones didn't work for me. So I kind of got to a point with my collection where I had very little bags. I downsized my collection so much. I believe I only had like maybe six to or seven bags and I really loved every single one and I used each one a lot. So as for my work bags, I just had the two Noe bags, one in Epi Leather and one in Monogram and I used those every single day. And then I had a couple of smaller bags that I would use on weekends when I'm going out for dinner or just running errands. So those bags are all very useful. They um, are a great color palette. They're pretty much all black um, and they go with my wardrobe really well. But I can feel myself, I absolutely love the Noe, I love the bucket bag, but I can feel myself really, really wanting a boxy kind of tote bag with a top handle. Now in my vintage handbag predictions for 2023 video, I mentioned a lot about top handle bags and just oversized tote bags in general, and that they're kind of predicted to be on trend this year. And I really, really want to add my one to my collection. I don't know if it's just because I've been looking at them a lot lately, but yeah, I kind of, I'm at that stage where I need one. I don't just want one, I need one. And I have been on the hunt for the Gucci Diana tote with the top handle in bamboo, but I really want one. I'm willing to pay a bit of a higher price if the interior is in perfect condition, but a lot of those bags, the interior is disintegrating. And if that is the case, I know it's going to take a lot of work for me to repair that. And if I'm going to put all of that time and effort in, I want to get it at a bargain. Like, I don't want to be paying $500, $600 for a bag and then having to get it and completely um, repair it. And then with the risk that those repairs might not work. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you would have seen that I have made a purchase this week on a vintage designer handbag on eBay. And that is on its way. So the moment it arrives, do not worry. I will be doing an unboxing. I will be cleaning it up for you guys. I will be showing you what fits and just talking about the bag itself. Now, a lot of you were like, oh my gosh, because the price was 96 US dollars. And a lot of you asked, how did you get a designer handbag for that price? Now, I will preface and say that this is a bit of a fixer-upper. And I am becoming a little more confident with my kind of ability to um, repair vintage bags, but I'm not completely confident. So anyway, I am taking a little more of a risk each time I buy a bag um, and just seeing what I can do with it. And it's a little bit of a hobby of mine and I obviously am fully aware that if my kind of skills at repairing this bag don't work out well then 
so be it. I might just sell it for the price that I bought it for. But I did want to try it out because it is such a beautiful bag. And I do think that I might be able to kind of revamp it and give it a new life. So that is on its way from Japan. And I'm so excited to show you guys. I'm so excited to create more handbag related, um, capsule wardrobe related videos for you guys. It is on the way. And yeah, it's just because of the busy kind of Christmas period that I kind of um, slipped with all of that sort of stuff but I can feel myself I have the mental capacity now to start thinking about it all again and kind of delve back into my hobbies and as for my wardrobe I am going through a process with it at the moment I am selling things on I am buying new things and I'm really just revamping it a lot of the clothes I have had for years and there's nothing wrong with them it's just that I've worn them so much that I really don't feel as though I'm reaching for them as much anymore because I've worn them so much. So they're still in really good condition because I have really focused on buying good quality clothing. So I'm selling a lot of them on. And like this, for example, this is a new top. Um, I got it from Depop. It's shown a joy. It still had the tags on it. And this is something I've recently added to my capsule wardrobe. So until I feel as though my wardrobe is at a point where I'm like, yes, this is where I want it. I don't know, think I'll ever get to that stage, but I know what that feeling feels like when I'm pretty satisfied with it and I'm just not there yet. So it is coming. Give me a couple more weeks and all of the capsule wardrobe content will be here. <laughs> now with all of that being said, it brings me on to today's topic, which is designer handbag wear and tear deal breakers. So obviously if you are looking for a pre-loved handbag, it doesn't even have to be vintage, there is going to be wear and tear. But sometimes it is handy to know which wear and tear do you just completely steer away from and it's too much of a headache to even try and repair or which wear and tear is quite easily fixable. So I worked out I've been doing buying and selling and doing up handbags. Not, I don't repair to a crazy extent but I've been doing it for about three years now and there are some things that now I look at and I'm just like nah, not even going to bother but some things I'm like yeah that was that was a pretty easy fix and I'm definitely keen to do that again. Now if you've been following me for a while you may or may not have noticed that I don't really um, post many blog posts anymore because Instagram and YouTube really do take up a lot of my time but I try and update my website as much as possible and I have decided that any video or YouTube video that I do that has a lot of tips and tricks in it that you may need to like refer back to, I'll always create a blog post for it because I know personally if I'm watching a video, I like to take some notes, um, but sometimes you just don't have time to do that. So if in a week's time you are browsing Vestia Collective or eBay for a pre-loved handbag and you're thinking, Oh, what was that that Shannon said about wear and tear deal breakers? Which one should I steer clear from? Head to my website. There is a blog post on it and I have listed everything in dot point form. Guys, there's a lot of information there. So yeah, I've written it all down for you guys to refer back to and this is what I'll kind of be going through today. So let's start with fixable wear and tear. Now, missing or broken straps. So I've got some bags here that I want to show you as an example. And you guys, you'll be proud to know that I have been putting all of my bags in dust bags and it feels really good. A lot of the dust bags I don't actually have because they are vintage designer bags. A lot of them don't come with them. So any that I do have, I use. I also bought a bunch of generic kind of cotton bags. I'll link um, the eBay seller below who sells these and I think they came in like a 10 pack So I bought a bunch of these. I think they were $15 for 10 So that, that that's what I'm using for bags that don't have a dust bag and then for my larger bags This was actually what my um, King bed sheets came in like this little um, Bamboo bag which is actually perfect for my no way bag. So anyway talking about um, missing or broken straps so if you see a bag and the strap is completely broken and they say attention attention broken strap have a look at how the strap is connected to the bag if the strap is removable for instance this is the no way bag with a buckle if i undo this buckle just so long as the part that attaches to the bag is intact um, it's totally fixable so if i undo that so that is the bag there as long as these parts are intact if this part is damaged in any way, jump onto Etsy and have a look and see if there are any straps available. There should be. So there are Etsy sellers who specifically make designer handbag kind of dupe straps. They do them in epi leather, 
Vachetta leather, a lot of the Louis Vuitton kind of leathers, but have a look and obviously make sure that there is a replacement strap before you actually purchase the bag. And guys, you might get a bag at a fraction of the price because of that damage on the strap and you can just buy a new one and attach it. Now, obviously they're not available for all straps, like the Louis Vuitton Neverfull, the straps are connected. So that might even be something that you think about in future if you ever do buy another bag. Have a look at, for me, it is a massive tick if a strap is removable because we've just seen um, the big guitar kind of straps are so on trend and if you can kind of take a thinner strap off and put that on and kind of revamp your designer handbag, then the options really are endless. So I absolutely love bags that have removable straps. So always make sure that you look out for that. Another example is the Louis Vuitton pochette and a lot of other Louis Vuitton bags also have this kind of clip um, mechanism. So any, actually anything with a D-ring, I mean, uh, I don't know, I've never done it before, but if you were to, if it has a D-ring and even if the strap is sewed onto it, you could always cut it off and clip a different strap on, but it really depends on what you want to do and if you ever want to resell it on and that might be an issue, it might bring the price down if it's not the original strap. But then again, like, I mean, the alternative was the other strap was completely broken. So yeah, look out for D-rings. Um, these ones, yeah, completely replaceable. Now this pochette, it is a vintage one and this is... A, it's an authentic Louis Vuitton um, chain, although it didn't originally come on this bag. There was a leather one, but the seller that I purchased from, obviously it was too damaged, so they replaced it themselves, but I can easily take this off. Um, there's like a little closure, metal closure, and if I got little pliers and kind of open it up, I could easily take this chain off. Someone actually messaged me um, interested in this bag and asked if they could remove it, but they seemed a bit turned off that um, it was kind of connected there. But I mean, designer bags aren't invincible. Like you can use little pliers, but I do understand some people don't want to do that, especially when they're paying a bit of money for a bag. So anyway, that's another option is anything with a clip. Um, and I did want to show you an example of a bag that you can't remove the strap from. So if you're looking at a bag like this where it is completely sewn on and connected and the strap is ruined, well then, yeah, maybe steer clear of it. But like I said, if you feel confident enough and you're up to it, you could always cut the strap off and buy yourself a... Um, like I said, on Etsy, they have black leather straps with clips and you could clip it on yourself. It really just depends on what you want to do and your kind of personal preference. So for me, I think that damage to straps, um, whether they're missing or whether they're broken or just have any kind of damage at all, I don't think it's a deal breaker. And obviously, if you're buying a bag where the strap needs to be replaced, um, I just hope that you're really getting a bargain because even the straps off Etsy, you're going to be paying around $50. So just take that into consideration. Are you better off paying an extra $50 and finding one without a broken strap? But if you're getting something like $200 cheaper because of that, well then yeah, it would be worth it. So you just, you really, it is a case by case basis with bags. None of them are the same and you really just have to weigh up all of your options and just make sure that you're kind of getting a deal that you are happy with. Now the next one is obviously again a case by case basis. It really depends on how dirty the item is but I've put dirty canvas or suede. So when it is like Louis Vuitton canvas this stuff and same with the Gucci um, PVC it is so durable and so easy to clean and some of them you'll see, I don't know where it comes from or why, if you know, please let me know in the comments below, but some of them get these like little white marks. They almost, it almost looks like um, white out, like liquid paper. Um, I don't know where that actually comes from, but a lot of them get it. You can actually kind of scratch that off even just with your fingernail. So, um, but yeah, obviously it really depends on the bag, but look closely and if you feel as like it's just dirt and the person selling it hasn't cleaned it properly, then it does have a coating, it's really durable and chances are if it's got like a dirty, um, yeah, dirt on it, you should be able to clean it up. But then again, it's not super common because if someone's trying to sell a bag, they're obviously going to clean it before they try and sell it to make it look good, but not in all cases. Same goes for leather. Um, so, like this bag here, the person obviously just used it and for years and didn't really clean it up when they sold it. They obviously weren't too worried, but when I received it, I gave it a really good clean um, with handbag cleaner. I'll link the handbag cleaner that I use below. Um, and then I 
gave it a bit of a um, what do you call it like a leather conditioner it came up so nice and black and shiny again so keep your eye out for that another one is suede now suede was not on my radar as something that I felt as though you could really give a good clean but my friend Lou from life with Lou here on YouTube I'll link her channel below um, she recently purchased a Chanel boy bag at an amazing price because there had been a lot of color transfer on it so obviously the person wearing it previously it was like a light gray kind of suede um, and it had a lot of color transfer on it obviously from black jeans or something like that and when Lou received the bag she took a risk and props to Lou like honestly she took a risk because she hadn't cleaned I don't think she would cleaned suede before um, and the bag still wasn't totally cheap because obviously it is Chanel um, and she cleaned it up and guys it came up amazing um, again I'll leave that cl handbag cleaner below that she used but it was amazing but yeah she took a risk she absolutely nailed it and chances are when she does decide to sell that bag she'll probably be able to make a fair bit of money out of it so go Lou and yeah ever since then I now look at suede bags differently I'm like oh if it's a little bit dirty I might be able to clean that and I've kind of looked at handbags over time just differently like what material is it not what handbag is it what material is it because a lot of like with clothes we're pretty ruthless we'll always try and get a stain out and we'll use different stuff and very rarely I mean I don't think I've ever created worse a worse stain by trying to get a stain out so I feel as though give it a go obviously only if you're getting it a bargain and it's completely up to you I don't want to tell you guys to do something and you go and do it and it doesn't work out it's completely at your own risk but I do think you should be more confident than you probably already are. Now the next fixable is tarnished LV hardware and I say Louis Vuitton because it is the hardware is made of brass so if you're looking at a Louis Vuitton bag and the canvas is beautiful and the leather looks great but the hardware is really dull buy it because you can get Brasso from your local grocery store a microfiber cloth and for under like I don't know how much Brasso is but for like 10 bucks, you'll be able to completely polish that brasso up. This, where is it? Oh, this. This chain was practically orangey brown and I polished it with brasso and it is now like a beautiful champagne gold again. So yeah, you really can bring them back to life. Unfortunately, with brands like Gucci, um, YSL, um, Celine, their hardware cannot be polished up and I don't even want to get into that topic because I'm quite passionate about hardware. I'm always like why would you pay so much money on a bag and they can't even do like 18 karat gold coated brass. Like you're paying thousands of dollars, you should expect that kind of hardware. Um, and it's just a shame because if you have a bag for years and years and years and the hardware tarnishes, it completely ruins the bag. And even if everything else is intact, that's a real kind of deal breaker for me. So that's why I do buy a lot of Louis Vuitton because it stands the test of time. Um, same with Chanel bags. They used to use a hardware that was 18 karat gold um, coated. So obviously that doesn't tarnish. The only thing I am looking to try that I haven't tried before is once I polish up the Louis Vuitton hardware I am looking at buying like a clear kind of coating because if you've had a vintage Louis Vuitton handbag before you will know that you will polish it up and within a month it's kind of tarnished again and that can get annoying just that whole polishing process so I am looking at uh, you can buy it I think from Bunnings like a hardware store um, at getting like a, it's almost like a clear nail polish and you kind of put it on the hardware afterwards and it keeps that shine so I'm yet to try that if I give it a go and it works out I'll be sure to let you guys know but yeah if you're ever looking at Louis Vuitton but again if you're looking at a Celine bag or a Gucci bag and the hardware is tarnished or Fendi then unfortunately that there's I don't think there's anything you can do about that so the last um, fixable one that I wanted to talk about is loss of shape now it really depends on the style of the bag but if you're looking at a bag um, that is like a Noe bucket style bag and when it is sitting there in the photo it's leather and it's all slouchy especially with the monogram ones and it's all slouchy and you're worried about the shape of it um, don't worry you can always buy an organizer now I don't actually have a Noe specific organizer but I do use kind of just this sort of size um, this one here is made for a speedy 30 um, I also have one that's made for a speedy 25 and that works quite well in the Noe bag with the um, my 
a five planner next to it it kind of pops it out quite nicely but they really help keep a bag shape and the moment I take that organizer out it flops and slouches so yeah if you're looking in a bag and it's quite slouchy always look at the possibility of those I'll link below where I buy my mine from and you guys would not believe um, the amount of different organizers they have for a range of different bags even if you have I mean this is a basket bag but even if you have a bag that kind of tapers out like this um, yeah if there's the measurements online on the listing have a look and there's chances are there's going to be an organizer for that kind of style now a lot of the Gucci Diana totes that I look at which is quite a boxy kind of style um, some of them because they're leather they're kind of all slouching but to me it looks exactly the same as like the Kristen Dior um, book tote kind of size so I might be able to buy an organizer that's made for the Kristen Dior book tote and slip it into the Gucci Diana bag and it'll help keep its shape again so loss of shape obviously depending on the style but there are very easy fixable options for that and again with vintage bags they are going to lose their shape like it just happens with wear so um, yeah don't worry about that always buy an organizer so they are all of the easy fixes now I want to move on to the deal breakers so the first one I want, wanted to mention kind of sits between them so it really does depend on you and your confidence and I really wasn't sure whether or not to put it as a deal breaker because it's kind of not but again it comes down to your confidence and whether you're willing to take that risk so the only reason why I think it's a fixable um, on the cusp of a deal breaker is because I, I have actually fixed a bag quite easily um, by doing this now that is a peeling flaking or sticky interior you'll see stickiness in a lot of vintage um, Louis Vuitton bags and you'll see a lot of peeling and flaking in vintage Gucci bags so I recently not recently it was like over a year ago I don't know why I said that um, but I purchased a Gucci satchel bag and I didn't really look too much into the listing and what was wrong with it but I got it at a great price I think I got it for $250 Australian um, so anyway it arrived and the moment I started putting all my stuff in I got it really excited I got to work I pulled my phone out and it had just this white kind of dust all over it a yellowy kind of dust actually and I was like what the hell is that and as soon as I started to feel in the bag I didn't notice it initially but once I started to feel inside the bag the whole interior was completely disintegrating it was almost like a texture between sand and like a talcum powder like it was quite a fine kind of disintegration but anyway I was like oh my gosh straight away went on to YouTube how do you fix um, disintegrating interior of a Gucci bag and one person pulled the whole insert out it's almost like a sock like you can pull it inside out and laid it out and got warm soapy water and scrubbed it so I did that and guys it took me at least an hour and a half of just scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing but it worked I scrubbed until all of the residue um, you could feel the bag started to go furry because um, all of the kind of coating had been removed so I removed it all with a brush um, and some warm soapy water let it out to dry um, just in my living area just yeah let it dry overnight or over a couple of days and it was completely fixed and I ended up selling that bag for $550 and when I sold it it was gone like that and I had so many people asking is this still available and I'm kicking myself because that was the first time I really had um, sold a bag a designer bag and if I knew what I know now I probably would have jacked the price up a little more and tried to get a little more for it because I know that that bag was probably worth around 800 850 because it was such a beautiful style and it's quite a rare style I'll insert a photo if I have one but anyway I completely fixed that bag so the only thing you have to worry about though is if the bag is leather and the interior is disintegrating you can't really get the leather wet because sometimes it can warp um, I've seen videos on YouTube of girls completely drenching the leather and everything and bringing a bag back to life but I am so scared of wetting leather because of the warping that can happen to it so some people are definitely way more confident than I am but that's why I've kind of put it on the cusp of a fixable or a deal breaker because it really depends on whether or not you're willing to take that risk but you can fix it in terms of a sticky interior like on the Louis Vuitton ones I have never dealt with it before I've never tried it but I've looked it up on YouTube and 
it looks like you can fix it quite easily. So I think I might try it just to give it a go. I might buy a really cheap, because they do come up like something, you know, you, sometimes you can get really flaking Louis Vuitton bags for like a hundred bucks. And I'm thinking of trying it just to give it a go and seeing if I can fix it. So that one's kind of not a deal breaker, but kind of is. If you feel as though you look at a disintegrating interior and you're not up for spending like two hours cleaning it, then, and you want to pay the extra hundred, depends how much, um, on just a bag that doesn't have that issue, then go for it. But if you are someone who is looking for a bargain and you feel as though, yeah, I'm willing to put that time and effort in, then yeah, it's definitely something that can be fixed. The next deal breaker I want to talk about is cracked leather or canvas. The moment canvas on Louis Vuitton or um, PVC on Gucci is completely cracked, like um, kind of like a cut through it, and same with leather, um, for me, I just would steer clear. I think you can fix it um, if you take it to like a leathersmith or something, but for me personally, that's a deal breaker. I think the time, um, the money and the effort to try and fix that issue just wouldn't be worth it for me. But again, by all means, if you feel as though you know someone who's able to fix that or if you know like a leathersmith who's able to fix leather quite easily, then go for it. But I might get there, but at this stage, it's a deal breaker for me. I haven't dealt with um, cracked canvas, but I've heard that I don't think Louis Vuitton will fix canvas if it's cracked. They'll fix the leather, um, like the... Vachetta leather I think it's called, they'll fix that, they'll replace that, they'll do all of that. Um, but the moment that canvas is cracked they won't even, I don't think they even look at it. Um, same with leather, yeah again, I don't know, I've never dealt with that before but for me personally I would just, because it doesn't, you don't see them pop up a lot. So for me if one pops up I'm kind of just like oh, I'll just wait for the next one kind of thing. So for me that's a deal breaker. The next deal breaker is no date code. Now. Previously, this hasn't been an issue for me because my, if you've watched my unboxing of my Monogram Noe bag, it doesn't have a date code. It has half the date code, but the other half, half has kind of rubbed off. For me, the fact that it even had any kind of remnants of a date code, I was kind of happy with that. Um, and I knew that that bag was going to stay in my collection. Well, I thought it was. I think it still will. I have been wearing my Monogram Noe a lot, um, but... Yeah, if it doesn't have a date code, I would just steer clear because more so for the resale value. A lot of people look at a date code as Bible. If if it doesn't have a date code, it's not authentic. But if you are someone who's um, knows a little bit more about design items, you will know that there are plenty of ways to tell if a design item is authentic or not, and it's not always a date code. I mean, date codes didn't always exist. There are plenty of bags out there, Louis Vuitton, that don't have a date code at all. So... Yeah, it just it's just something that like obviously if you're going to get it for a really good price and you know that you want that bag in your collection for years and years and years, then go for it because you can get it for a really good price without a date code as long as the seller is someone that you trust. But for me personally, if I even want to get my Noe bag authenticated, um, Bagaholic 101, I don't even think they'll look at it without a date code. I probably could take it into Louis Vuitton and because they're kind of experts on the bags, they'll know whether or not it's authentic. So I do always have that option. But yeah, I, I kind of steer clear of it now. I just don't really bother. Um, but again, that's up to you. If you don't look at selling it and you really want the bag and you know that the seller only sells authentic items um, and you can kind of tell if a um, bag is authentic, then yeah, go for it. Oh my god, Remy is so cute. She's here sleeping and she just did a big stretch and I love her. Um, okay, so the next deal breaker is major crease creasing in canvas. Now, I'll try and find a photo and insert a picture for you guys for reference, but I had a Louis Vuitton Speedy 30 and in the photo I could kind of see that there was like these distinct kind of straight lines in the canvas, like of a, a crease. And I thought, oh, it's obviously been stored away. They've popped it out for the photo to upload it, but I'm sure that creasing will come out. Um, anyway, I had that bag for about a year. I stuffed it all the time with um, sheets and tissue paper to try and get rid of that crease, and it never came out. So it's very hard to see in, in photos, um, but it's something to be aware of. And now that I know that that and the reason I say major creasing is because a lot of little creases do pop out over time once you stuff them. But if you are looking at a 
bag that's generally canvas or PVC or sometimes even leather and it has like quite a defined kind of straight crease in it then just be prepared that it may not come out. Now a lot of them aren't really noticeable so I wouldn't say it's a complete deal breaker of like don't even look at it but now that I know that some of them don't completely come out I kind of just steer clear of them so it's just something to be aware of is just that sometimes creasing does not come out so they are all my fixables and deal breakers and I did just want to wrap it up in a little bow and say that when you are looking on a, the pre-love market keep your mind open you would not believe the cleaning products that are available you wouldn't believe um, how many replacement kind of parts are available so if you're looking at a bag and there's one thing that's bothering you and you feel as though you can fix it give it a go take the risk um, it is so fun I love doing it obviously it depends on you as a person and if you enjoy doing it but if you are willing to take the risk and you think it'll be a little bit of fun then go ahead and try it out you can buy D rings um, and you may be able to go to a leathersmith and they could sew on new D rings I haven't even looked at um, like professional leathersmith people and what they can do but I'm sure that they can do a lot so yeah keep an open mind have a look on Etsy at handbag um, kind of accessories and parts um, have a look at cleaners out there but yeah that's what I do I'll look at a bag and if I look and I go oh everything is perfect but inside it's peeling I'll go hmm I might jump on YouTube how to fix peeling inside a Gucci bag right there and I'll watch the video and if it looks too hard basket obviously I'll steer clear but if it looks quite easy I'm like yeah I can do that well then I purchase it so yeah make sure you're just kind of just keeping an open mind and just try things out so now that I've spoken about all the deal breakers and what can be fixed I did just want to talk about just my experience overall over the past three years my observations things that I've learned not just necessarily about wear and tear but just things that I've noticed about particular brands or um, which um, materials have surprised me and I thought that you guys might find this information handy so LV like Louis Vuitton Epi leather is amazing <laughs> I love it it is so durable it's so easy to clean it's timeless it's understated and they do come in the most beautiful colors so I truly think that epi leather does not get the credit that it deserves and I personally love it so I, I just wanted to mention that I wanted to give a bit of a shout out to Louis Vuitton epi leather another observation that I've noticed and if you have a similar kind of style to me maybe take this into consideration but one LV monogram bag is kind of enough for me um, I find that I style just block color bags way better and I find them easier to style than monogram and although monogram kind of goes with everything it really is a pattern so I find that I have to be wearing very plain which I do anyway I don't know why I'm finding it so hard to style monogram I'm still trying to figure that out but I haven't really I don't reach for my I always reach for my epi leather no way I, I never really reach for my monogram one um, and then same for this pochette I would always reach for this or um, a little crossbody bag that's like plain black or a plain color rather than this and I don't know why that is um, but yeah monogram I just haven't been reaching for as much so that's just an observation of mine the other thing I wanted to mention and someone said this in a YouTube video and it is so true you're better off having less bags because you wear them more often I find sometimes I look at my collection I'm like wow it's really small should I have more bags but the more you have the less I change them up and the less I wear the other ones like with my um, work bags because I only have two I'm changing them up all the time because they're there and I am just more inclined to change them up when it comes to smaller kind of weekend bags because I have a lot of bags this size I very rarely change them up and I don't know what that is I don't know why um, we do that I think maybe it's just too much option so we kind of just don't even bother changing up 
um, that size bag. But yeah, the less option you have, the more inclined you are to wear the bags more. And I find that's the same with clothes. When, I'm, when I have less clothes, I'm wearing them all a lot more. Not just because there's less clothes, but because I can kind of see them better. And I can kind of assess, oh, does that go with that? But the moment I have heaps of option, I'm a bit like, oh, I can't be bothered. I'm just going to put this bag on and, and walk out. So that is just something um, to be aware of. Maybe if you find that you have a lot of bags and you're not wearing them all, um, sell them all on. Buy yourself one really nice one. Another thing I've found is not all designer ha bags have good resale value. So, like I said, I've bought like over 30 um, vintage de designer handbags and I've kind of worked out now which ones have good resale value and which ones don't. Generally, the ones that are a really unique style, like a style that you don't see often, sell really quick. Um, when I bought that Celine bucket bag, that sold like that. Same with the Gucci satchel bag because it was quite a different style, it sold so quickly. When it comes to the Louis Vuitton pochette, it is such a popular style. Same with the Speedy, the Louis Vuitton Speedy. You would think most popular styles of all time, everyone wants one. You'd think you'd buy it, you'd be able to flip it really quickly and sell it. No, they're really hard to sell. Um, I think it's because there is so much option out there and there's so many out there that if someone wants one, they'll be able to find one pretty quickly. So yeah, if you are looking to buy pre-loved bags out for the purpose of making some money, um, I think it's fun. I don't think there's anything wrong with it, especially if you put time and effort into cleaning it up. I think you deserve to make a little bit of money on it. Um, but just be aware that the, the style is, in my experience, that have um, sold are the ones that are just a little bit different. Like that Celine one, I was so shocked that it sold so quickly. And in saying that, Celine. Celine is beautiful. It is really making a comeback. I don't know if your Instagram feed is full of Celine, but mine is. And there are so many vintage Celine bags on the market. They're really durable. The only thing is obviously the hardware, just like a lot of brands that aren't Louis Vuitton. Once the hardware is tarnished, it's kind of tarnished for good. But some of them are in really, really good condition. Um, and yeah, so many Celine bags at such a cheap price. It is crazy. So yeah, if you're wanting like the classic um, Celine Macadam, I think that's how you say it, then jump online and buy yourself one. You probably only have to pay a couple of hundred dollars and you'll have a beautiful Celine bag in your collection. So um, yeah, Celine's beautiful. That is my observation. Anyway, guys, that is going to bring me to the end of this video. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I want to mention. Um, if you have any questions for me, leave a comment below and I might collate all of the questions and I might do another video like this in a month or two months time. Um, if I can think of anything else, but at this time they are all the things that were kind of like the burning things that I wanted to mention because they have been a hot topic for me at the moment and I've also noticed on my website I can look at what blog posts people are reading and also with YouTube what videos people are watching and the past month everyone is watching my design uh, pre-loved designer videos and everyone's reading my pre-loved designer um, blog post. I think a lot of people have entered 2023 and they not only want to drink more water <laughs> because that is like my goal every year but they also want to have more of a sustainable wardrobe and probably own less things and just um kind of people are becoming more environmentally aware and just wanting to impact the environment as least as possible with their possessions so that's probably why um designer bags and capsule wardrobes are such a hot topic right now so they are for me anyway. It's all I've been thinking about. So anyway, guys, I'll leave it at that. Um, hope you're all doing well. Let me know what you're up to in the comments below. I love chatting to you guys in the comments. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, guys.